Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, I've got a first impressions video for you. Here we go. This is the Jinhao X450, an inexpensive Chinese pen. Now, I've got an X750 already, so I thought this would be a nice one to compare it against. So join me now, down on the mat. Let's take a look at the pen, look at the ink I'm going to use, do a writing sample, then I'll give you my first impressions. Here we are down on the mat. It's time to see the Jinhao X450 being taken out of its sleeve. There we go. Do you know how exciting is it watching a piece of plastic being taken off a pen when you can see through it anyway? Just going to turn this around. I ordered this because, well, it's cheap. But I also liked the look of this pattern. I think that's quite pretty. It looks a little bit like loads of lightning strikes to me. I like the bluey grey background. I think again it's just interesting. Let's take a look around the pen. So at the top we've got a black plastic dome. That comes down. Then we've got this gold coloured plastic clip. Very stiff. Won't even shift. The cap. It tapers out until it gets about a third of the way down the cap. Then it's the same width all the way down till we get to this metal band. The band, we've got Jinhao. Then on the back, X450. Really plain, really simple. Says what it is. That's what we like, isn't it? There's a very minimal drop off from the bottom of that band down to the body. I mean, you could hardly notice it. The only reason I'm really getting there is because I'm feeling for it. The body, so we've got the same width till about maybe two thirds of the way down. Then it starts to taper in. We've got another plastic gold coloured band and then another domed plastic end cap. Nice and simple. I do like the colour in there. Let's take the cap off. There's half, there's one. That's two. Now, I don't think this is taking a cap off. I think it's actually unscrewing the body. Ah. Oh. It was unscrewing the body. As soon as we started that, in there we do have a converter. Let's pop the body back on. I was trying to unscrew the cap. It doesn't. It's a push and a pull. And I'll tell you something, that's very stiff. I'm really having to put a fair amount of pressure. And then as it comes off, it's actually springing back and digging into my thumb. One more time. Ah, managed not to dig my thumb that time. So that's something I need to be aware of. It's really stiff to get into. Once we're in, we've got this black section, then we've got the nib. Let's take a closer look at the nib. So to be honest, it's just a classic Jinhao nib. So we've got that little bit of a border there. It looks to be in a silver colour. And then the rest of the nib, it's in that gold colour. We've got the breather hole, the Jinhao logo, the word Jinhao, and then 18kgp. So from the nib, we come into the section. The section actually looks a little bit unusual. We've got this gold coloured band at the bottom. Then we've got a bit of black plastic which seems to be tapering out a bit then we come in really quickly there's a little bit of texture in there which i think is a way to guide where your fingers should be then we taper out until we come to the body if i hold in my hand a little bit on the short side i think i'd get away using this unposted but the way that it's guiding my fingers it's actually quite comfortable I'm going to try posting this just to see what it's like. So posted, to my mind, it's back heavy, but I prefer to use pens unposted. I might get used to it, but I think I'm still going to carry on unposted because, yes, as I said, it's too short, but not enough to cause me an issue. Let's pop that cap back on. I'm going to quickly swap over now and we'll do some size comparisons. My first two pens, the Pilot Metropolitan, and the Lamy Safari. These are standard pens I try and use in every video. To me, they're all virtually the same length. Let's take the caps off. So with the cap off, I would say the Metropolitan and the Jinhao, I've got to be honest, they look about the same size. 
certainly when I've got all the nibs lined up here at the bottom. The Safari definitely got the size advantage over those two pens. The Jinhao, it's got a number six size nib. Means I can swap the nib if I want to. That's one of the things I want to look at because although Jinhao nibs are nice, using them essentially as a nib holder so I can try different types of nibs. I really enjoy that. Let's post these. Posted. Again, we see that Lamy definitely a lot longer. This time, the Metropolitan, you can certainly see posted is shorter. The Jinhao, as we saw earlier on, it's nice in the hand. It's a nice middle of the road between these two. But I just felt it was a little bit back heavy for me. I'm now going to swap these pens out and fetch some that are roughly in the same price range. Now, normally here, I would only fetch in two pens. I've brought in three. The reason will become very obvious in a second. First pen I brought in, this is a Platinum Preppy. Eight Australian dollars, but it does not come with a converter. The other pens we're going to look at, they all have converters included. We've got the Jinhao X450, six Australian dollars. I've brought in a Jinhao 997, six Australian dollars. I've also brought in a Jinhao X750, so same line as the 450. Six Australian dollars. Three gin house, all six dollars each. I think they look nice. The X750 doesn't post. The 997 and the X450, yeah, they look about the same size. The Preppy, again, a little bit shorter. Let's remove the caps. So with the caps off, I've got to be honest, I don't see much of a size difference in any of the pens. The 997 may be slightly longer, but only by the tiniest amount. The X750, the X450, They've both got number six size nibs. That 997, I'm not sure what size the nib is, but definitely looks smaller when you compare it against the other two gin house. Then the Preppy, it's got that really tiny nib, but it doesn't matter because it writes so nicely. Let's pop the caps back on. With the cap on, I've got to be honest, to my eye, I don't see much in the way of size difference. I'm now going to step away from the desk, I'm going to give the pen a clean out. When I come back, we'll take a look at the ink, we'll fill the pen, do a writing sample, then I'll give you my first impressions. I'm back. Today's ink by Dye Mine. Dye Mine Royal Blue. Not a good match for the body, but I think it's still going to complement it quite nicely. I may need it at some time to try something like maybe Odeneal in here, but I've used that ink a lot lately and I wanted to try something different, which is why I thought, well, we'll give Royal Blue a go. Let's get that out of the way. Fetching Quickie Koala, today's ink holder. There goes the bottle. Okay, let's take the pen apart. There's a converter. I've already pushed it all the way down. Let's fit that in the bottle. And fetch in some ink. So there, one fill. Almost to the top. Just wipe off the nib. Then I'll pop that pen back together. Let's get the ink out of the way and let's fetch in the trusty notepad of testing. This is by Black and Red and it's an A5 notebook. It uses the Oxford Optic paper. It's a really nice fountain pen friendly paper. Let's do some writing. So we have here a Jinhao X450. Now it was advertised as a broad nib. I think it might be tending towards medium, but we'll give it the benefit of a doubt. And when you and when you consider it costs six dollars, I mean, who's really going to argue? The ink, dye mine, royal blue. I like that ink. It's quite a nice colour, isn't it? You know, as I said, it's not exactly a match for the pen. But certainly, I think it complements it quite nicely. Let's do some drying times. So we go immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. 30 Still fairly wet at 30 seconds. Let's go for one minute. After a minute. So we're still fairly wet, even after a minute. I'm going to move the mic down to the paper so you can hear the pen writing.
that's quite enjoyable to write with. I can see that that line, it's looking a little bit thicker now than when I first started. I do need to compare it against some other writing samples to see if it's tending more to the medium or to the broad. It's smooth. You can hopefully hear a little bit of feedback. It's not scratchy. I don't want to say it's gliding over the paper because there's definitely that tactile feel to it, but it's not catching, it's not dragging, it's not scratching. Let's look at line variation. So the first three lines, no pressure. Next three, I'm definitely adding some pressure here. And you can see a nice thicker line. Do some S's. So I'm trying to put more pressure on my downstroke. Here, I'm just going to go with no pressure. So you can definitely see the difference between the two. My final test, my scribble. This is just checking to see if the ink flow keeps up. Writes really well. So what are my first impressions of the Jin Hao X450? I love the looks. I think it looks so nice. It was a little bit short when it's unposted. I would have liked it if it was just a little bit longer. I only paid $6. Who's really going to complain about that anyway? It writes nicely. The nib, I like the fact it's two-tone. A lot of pens that I've got where it's either all silver or gold coloured, cut to be honest, they look a bit boring. I like that little bit of interest and I certainly see that in this nib. The nib's not too bad. I'm not 100% certain I'd call it a broad nib, but it's definitely a nice tending broad line. I think that's the best way I could put it. Quite like this ink colour in here. i say it's not really a match, it's a compliment. And I think that does complement it really well. I think this was a worthwhile investment to add to my collection. I do have quite a lot of gin house now. I've got the X450. I already had an X750. I believe there's an X250. So I think that's the one I've got to get next so that I can compare all three pens in this X line. But this is my first impression of a gin house X450. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. What do you think about this X450? Have you got an X750? I believe there's also an X250 as well, so I may need to look at getting that at some time in the future. Please drop your comments down below. I'd love to know what you think about these pens and any similar price range pens that I could maybe compare it against. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment. Well, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.